Hello and welcome to Box, where we unbox, review and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have with us the Sony X90J 4K TV in 55 inches. As a respected brand, Sony is well known for their quality tech and with the latest range of TVs this year, this model is no exception. Continuing with the thin, super high quality display, the X90J in 55 inches will bring a perfect picture to any content that you watch thanks to the inclusion of the super resolution XR processor and accompanying upscaling features. It's roughly the mid-range model in their new lineup, making it a good all-rounder in terms of price and features if you want the best of both worlds. Taking it straight out of the box, you get a handful of accessories such as user manuals, a power cable, a remote and a few attachments for wall mounting. Sony have tried their best making everything seemingly plug and play with this one, so things like attaching the stand and setting up are relatively quick tasks. It's even a pretty light display, making it very easy to move around if needed. After laying it down on a covered surface, you get a good idea of what the back looks like. I quite like this subtle grid design for a more stylized look as opposed to the plain black plastic that you usually get on most TVs. There's only a few things to mention here, such as the large vent along the top and the vase mount directly in the center for wall mounting. Along the left, there's a strip of side facing connections for easy access, especially when wall mounted. Quickly getting into what's on offer here, you get the two USBs, a digital optical audio out, a 3.5 mm headphone jack, four HDMIs, a LAN connection, a satellite cable connection, and a composite input. Now only HDMIs 3 and 4 support 2.1 compatibility, with one of them supporting eARC for soundbar connection, which does mean having to favour which console you want to receive the high-speed connection if you have more than one next-gen consoles connected as well as a soundbar. The TV stand just simply slots into the bottom of the TV, pushing it into position on both sides. Interestingly, it has alternating positions for either central or edge support to work around your preferred accessories kept under or around the TV. No screws are required here, which is good to know if you ever change your mind on the stand position and just want to change things up. There's little to no inbuilt cable management provided here, which is slightly disappointing, though you do get some clips to at least keep them in line with the stand for that slight invisible cable look. Design wise, we have a relatively thin TV that works well both wall mounted and on a stand. It's not as thin as some of its competitors, but it's definitely in step with the new standard of TVs, leaving it thin enough to fit on a modern stand or flush to the wall when mounted. When it comes to setup, there are the usual long-winded series of menus that you just need to go through for logging into apps, turning on features and personalising everything ready for use. First up, you'll need to download the Google Home app to begin this process. If you already have a Google account, this is incredibly useful because you can link all of your online profiles to the TV for more custom recommended apps and shows. It also lets your Google Assistant recognise your voice, so when you direct commands to the TV later on, it understands you perfectly. After this, there are even more setup stages. Some of these you can skip if you don't have time, but others are essential to accessing certain features, so please read everything carefully before choosing to disable it. With everything set up and ready to go, let's take a little look at the menus and overall navigation. As usual, there's a simple pop-up menu along the bottom for accessing all of your inputs, as well as a more in-depth menu for accessing some of your most used settings. The main menu organises all of your apps and most used settings into a simple tile system. Now Sony has switched to Google TV this year, so you do get some Google specific perks, such as Google voice commands and home connectivity through an app, making navigation a little easier when integrating it with your existing tech. It also helps when automatically linking all of your Google preferences for instant personalization, like logging into your YouTube for example. The recommended apps are a little overwhelming to work through, but it does seem to contain a few more ads than usual. So if you want to remove these, this can be done simply just in the settings menu. The plus side of this though is that all of the windows do show you where to find the show if you're interested and if you have a subscription service for it, as well as some of the prices and overall ratings. The included remote does have the usual hotkeys for taking you directly to the most popular streaming services and has a specific button to make the most of the Google Assistant. Other than that, it's quite similar to previous years and works just fine for what you need it to do. The display itself does have a really nice bezel that's almost edge to edge, making the most of the display that's on offer. But if you notice a difference in the materials used, it's not necessarily a cheaper plastic, it's more of an ecological one. In 2021, Sony have really stepped up their game with their new eco standpoint, as the Bravia XR range uses sustainable and recycled materials within the frame and plastic components to try and reduce their effect on the environment. 
so it's great to see one of the biggest names in TV trying to do their bit to give back some of what's lost. Diving right into the panel specs, we have a 4K 3840x2160 full array LED display. Sony have used a variety of panel types in their range this year, with the higher end models using OLED and the budget models having standard LED. Alongside this, you'll also get local dimming, which will help bring out the quality 3600 to 1 contrast ratio on top of having the HDR10 and Dolby Vision Duo for that sharp picture quality. I thought the picture was incredibly vivid when watching animated movies, and I thought I got a true to life image when watching live action drama shows and cinematic classics. In terms of brightness and contrast, the brightness felt a little low even in a dark room, but the display did fare well in the brightness test, and it was bright enough that I didn't need to change the settings much thanks to the XR light control features working in the background. In the local dimming and light bleed test, I hardly saw any deformities at all. It was comfortable to watch and really showed off the deep contrast on offer here. The XR package in this TV brings a lot to the table, using a wide range of enhancing features to really boost the picture. From the power of the cognitive processor, the mini features bring true-to-life colours and a wider colour palette range, as well as contrast enhancers to hone in those lights and darks and level them out for a consistent picture. With that said, I could see it put to work when watching a variety of new shows, old favourites and even games delivering a nice consistent image. I mostly noticed the 4K upscaling with XR clarity. I felt it brought back what was lost in the expanded resolution, making older content look like it was made to be seen in high resolution. You'll be pleased to note that this TV also includes XR sound position. Now this works by offering more outputs across the screen with specifically placed speakers to recreate a natural sound quality. This works alongside Voice Zoom 2, which works by analysing voices and bringing those particular levels up to hear dialogue clearer than you usually would. I was finally able to to hear the TV clearly over any disruptive sounds without having to touch the remote to alter the volume at all. When it comes to gaming, you'll be spoiled with that rich quality you expect to see with next-gen gaming, as it fully supports 4K at 120Hz. But as it's a Sony product, it will of course favour the PS5 over the Xbox, automatically switching to game mode when connecting a PS console. But both will easily support the high-speed input with a few snags such as no variable refresh rate or ALLM compatibility. But I honestly I honestly didn't feel like I was missing something, because the response time is good enough to show no visual tearing and thanks to the already low input lag and high speed 2.1 connection, the picture was smooth and very comfortable even when playing high speed games like Forza. Now I did play games on both the Xbox and Playstation consoles and found gameplay overall exceptional. I played relatively close for filming purposes and I didn't see any flaws in the picture quality, not even the odd stutter. I put most of this down to the high speed HDMI input, but saying that there's no VRR support, the high performance games I played ran very smoothly. So after testing this TV for a few hours, I can easily say that it meets all of my expectations from a Sony brand TV. The picture had so many adaptive features that I found consistency in everything I watched, whether old or new content. And even though the game features aren't as fancy as some of the TVs I've seen of late, I thought gameplay looked fantastic after switching to the game mode, especially when playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the PS5. I found this TV to be exceptional in pretty much everything I watched, and definitely one to consider when looking for a good mid-range TV. So what do you think about the X90J from the Sony 2021 range? Let us know in the comments below, and if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Box, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.